Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for a car review. Today we have something a little bit different and new to the channel. We have a 2022 BMW M4 competition convertible to review today. Now I have driven some German cars before, including a 1986 SL 560 and a 2012 Mercedes E350 Cabriolet, which is the most similar to this car, but never a BMW. So I'm interested to see how this car can compare to those Mercedes models, as well as other cars that we've had on the channel. But before we get started, I would like to thank all of my subscribers. The channel is nearing 19,000 in total, which is a big number compared to where we started. And I'm to thank you all for that. However, only about 6% of people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. So if you could subscribe, it would be a huge help. It's free and you can always unsubscribe later. Since we are reviewing a new car brand on the channel, I would like to talk quickly about the history of the BMW and the M4 for those of you who don't know it already. Well, BMW was founded in the year 1916 in the city of Munich, which lies in the Kingdom of Bavaria, Germany. And this kingdom is what gave BMW its name, which stands for Bavarian Motor Works. And there is a way to say that in German, but I cannot pronounce it. And the company decided to start making aircraft engines, motorcycles, and even some farming equipment, which is pretty interesting. However, during the 1920s, the company started to shift more towards building automobiles, which had a higher demand at the time. And then after trying to destroy the world as we know it by building German aircraft engines during World War I and World War II, BMW was struggling financially. The BMW 507 and the BMW Isetta were financial failures for the company, and it seemed like their longtime rival, Mercedes-Benz, was going to purchase the company. However, things did turn around. BMW eventually found their niche by selling more sporty but affordable cars that families could own, including compact cars, sedans, and coupes. And over time, the brand became more upscale, more sporty and luxurious, which helped them become more popular popular in Europe as well as the United States during the Malays era. And it was during this time that BMW came up with their slogan, the ultimate driving machine, which described everything that their cars were, sporty, fun, fast, which was everything that the American cars were not at the time. And this mindset and slogan continues to guide BMW even today, with many of their cars still portraying a very sporty and athletic appearance and driving manner, which is unmatched by many other cars in the industry. And BMW has branded many of their vehicles as M performance vehicles. That's kind of like their most track ready, most performancey vehicles that they have to offer. And the BMW M4, such as this car, especially demonstrates that mindset. The BMW M4 has only existed since 2014, but what it is is essentially the two-door version of the BMW M3. And these M4s can be bought in either coupe or convertible forms, such as this car, and it can come in either the base or the competition form, which comes with more horsepower as well as more track-focused features, just like this car. And since the BMW M4 hasn't really existed for that long yet, there isn't a whole lot of history to talk about. However, it's also being refreshed for the 2025 model year with a slightly revised fascia and a new interior. Now, starting off the review as usual by taking a look at the front end of the BMW, and the elephant in the room is the huge kidney grill on the front of the car. BMW has always been known for this kind of grill style with the two different size, the nostrils, people call it, whatever. But the BMW M3 and M4 revealed this entirely massive, huge BMW grill, which was really controversial at the time and still is, especially with a lot of BMW's designs these days. People seem to just hate on it. I didn't really like this grill design when it came out, but it does look pretty good in person, and it's actually grown on me a little bit. It does look very aggressive overall, especially with the rest of the design on the front end with all the carbon fiber, the big slats in the grill, and that engine does need a lot of air and cooling. So it makes sense that it's large, but I do think that BMW probably could have improved it a bit. And on the front of the car, I also want to point out that the BMW badge is here. However, I want to mention that the colors on the BMW logo represent the colors of the Bavarian flag, which has these blue and white symbols on them, which is a really neat attention to detail on BMW's part. And most people probably have no idea 
why those colors are even there, but that is why. And I also want to mention that the headlights are pretty cool looking. They have a very intricate design. They have blue colors in them, and it also says BMW laser on the inside of them. So I guess that means that they are very bright, which wouldn't be too surprising. And the final thing I want to mention up front is that we have a very long hood, which is also very aggressively styled with lots of bumps and curves and creases to make it look extra sporty. And the aggressive nature of this BMW continues along the side where we find a really cool BMW M4 competition badge on the front fender. Looks very aggressive and kind of looks like it's a functional air duct, but it is unfortunately not. There's also a very large side skirt on the car, as well as these really cool looking staggered 19 inch in the front and 20 inch wheels in the back. And a really cool quirk about these wheels is that the center caps are weighted and freely spin so that the BMW logo is always facing up. Now, I'm not sure if this is a special option that came with this car. I haven't seen too many BMWs with that, but it's still a cool thing either way. And behind the wheels are absolutely massive looking brakes on this car. These are not carbon ceramic brakes, but it was possible to get carbon ceramic brakes with the M4 competition. And I also really like how the mirror has a pretty aggressive design. It also seems to have two different spokes on it, one on the bottom, which is actually connecting the mirror to the door, and another one on the top which looks kind of like a little wing in the air and it's kind of a design feature that other BMWs have had throughout the years and it looks pretty cool and I also like how the mirror cap is in carbon fiber very aggressive looking. At the rear of the BMW M4, there is a massive BMW logo on the trunk lid. It also has an M4 competition badge on the back, so everyone looking from the rear can tell that this is a very fast and special car. And if that badge doesn't give it away, this spoiler certainly will, because this is a carbon fiber spoiler on the back of the trunk lid. Very aggressive looking, and it probably is also functional to help keep the back end planted to the ground when driving sporty. And probably my favorite thing about the back end of this car is the extremely aggressive rear diffuser and the exhaust pipes. It's also made out of carbon fiber, of course, but it looks just plain cool. I absolutely love the way that it looks. And once you're ready to get into the trunk like I am, you can either use the key fob or this button underneath the trunk, and it will open very quickly like so. And within the trunk, we find about nine cubic feet of space. Honestly, not a lot, but I wasn't expecting there to be much space here just because this is a convertible and it's a two-door coupe. There is a really nice air compressor on the left side of the trunk in case if you get a flat tire or need to put air into your tires. As you can see, there is a sticker here showing a panel as well as photos of the convertible top. Well, what this means is that this panel needs to be down for the convertible top to then lower into the storage compartment above the trunk. And if you wanted more space, if you didn't want to lower your top, that's when you'd push the panel forward and you'd have a little bit more space in here for taller or bigger items in the trunk, which is pretty handy. And then once you're done, all you gotta do, slam the trunk and you're good to go. And of course, because this is a convertible, I would like to show you all how the convertible top operates. There is a button in the center console of the car, which has a little picture of the BMW with the top. If you push that button down, that tells the car that you want to lower the top. And as long as that partition is in the correct place, the back of the top will release, and then the trunk will immediately start to rise this panel very large, and then it moves out of the way to allow the top to neatly fold away into its storage spot. That large trunk panel will then go back over the top of the car, and then it'll leave a very flush looking design, very neat. And then say it starts raining or you wanna get out of the sun, all you have to do is pull the top button up, and then the top will go back into place in the opposite way that it went back down. And this is a very quick operation, which is pretty surprising, and it can also be done when the car is moving, which is pretty handy. Next, let's take a look underneath the hood of the BMW. WM4. Now it's really nice that there is not a latch that you have to release to open up the hood from here. All you have to do is lift, and under here we find a twin turbocharged 3 liter V6 engine. The base M4 and the base version of this engine makes about 473 horsepower and 407 pound feet of torque, which is really good, but this being the competition model, it comes with 503 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. And this engine is paired to an eight speed automatic, but what's really interesting about the 
the M4 is that the base version can be bought with a six-speed manual. However, you can't get the manual in the competition version, which is kind of strange. However, I think that BMW only has the eight-speed automatic available for the competition because that transmission is a lot quicker than a manual transmission would be. Next, let's start up the M4 and hear how that engine sounds. Next, let's take a look at the key fob that came with this vehicle. So as you can see, it is pretty standard, nothing too special going on here. We have an unlock button, a lock button, which also has the BMW logo on it, which is pretty cool, a trunk release, and a panic alarm button. And one of the coolest things about it is that it has the M branding colors on the side of the key fob, which is really awesome looking. However, I will say that the plastic isn't exactly the nicest feeling thing in the world, not quite as luxurious as I imagined. However, the weight does feel nice and it does have this nice metal accenting on the side so it is a pretty luxurious key fob overall and a very good fit for this car. Now that we've looked at the outside of the M4 let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. So, taking a look at the interior of this BMW M4, it is clear that the aggressiveness on the outside has continued on the interior as well. I really love the sporty red and black leather on the interior, the carbon fiber all over the place on the dashboard, and even on these optional M carbon bucket seats, which look absolutely phenomenal. And I really like how BMW also included M color stitching on the steering wheel and on the seat belts and several other places, as well as this BMW M4 competition sill plate. All of it really adds to make a really special feeling interior. So now let's go ahead and get inside and see what it's like. <laughs> All right, I am now on the inside of the BMW M4 and right off the bat I will say that this is a pretty big drop. You got to really lower yourself into these seats. They're very low to the ground and it's uh, honestly one of the more aggressive seats I've ever sat in. These are some of the most heavily bolstered seats in the world. They're really heavily bolstered on my sides as well as uh, by my thighs as well. It really helps make me feel like I'm getting a nice hug when I'm sitting here, which is good, but it's also practical because that means it's gonna keep me in place when I do a lot of sporty driving, which is very important. And I also love how these seats have just tons of carbon fiber on them on the seat back on the middle of the seat down here on the sides it's all extremely aggressive and these seats are nicely adjustable there are controls down by my thigh you can move the seat pretty much in any way you'd want and there's also an extra button there to adjust the side bolstering which is pretty handy however the one thing that I don't like about these carbon bucket seats is that they are not cooled they are only heated and I feel like it would be nice to have cooled seats because if you're going on out on a track day if you have the top down or if you get a little bit too warm whatever you may want to have cooled seats However, this particular BMW M4 does not have that. In front of me is a very aggressive and sporty looking steering wheel, of course. It has lots of carbon fiber on it, and it's also one of the thickest feeling steering wheels I've ever gripped. This steering wheel also does have a tilt and telescopic function. However, it is not power, which is surprising. It's manual, so there's a little lever on the bottom of the column, which you have to pull out, and then you can adjust it and then lock it back into place. And it has plenty of buttons on it. There's a heated steering wheel button in the middle right above an M badge which is very cool. The buttons on the left are used to control the cruise control. The ones on the right are for infotainment multimedia and the steering wheel also has these interesting looking red M1 and M2 buttons. These buttons are used to configure your own personal drive modes. For example you could have M1 set to all the most aggressive settings possible with the loudest exhaust, the sportiest feeling chassis, the heaviest feel steering, all that stuff. 
But then if you want to just quickly convert back to a comfortable drive mode, you could have M2 set for all the comfort settings to quickly change between them both. Also on the steering wheel are some really cool looking carbon fiber shifter levers. And on the left side of the steering column is a stock to control the turn signals as well as our headlights. And the stock on the right side of the steering column is used to control the automatic wipers. And this car also comes with a digital gauge cluster, which is not too surprising, but it has everything there that you'd might expect to see, such as your speedometer, your RPM, what gear you're in, you can see your maps, a bunch of really nice stuff. And it's controlled using a really interesting little button on the turn signal stock. There's a button on the end of it and you use that to kind of cycle through different options on the gauge cluster. I am surprised there aren't buttons on the steering wheel to control all that, but this still does work. And taking a look at the door panel, there are several things here to make note of. First of all, it is important to say that this car does come with a two-person memory function for the driver's seat, which is handy. And all four windows in this car are automatic up and down. But there is also a special button on the door panel, which shows, once again, a window on it. And this button is used to raise or lower all four windows at once. This is a very cool feature that I think most cars should have, especially if it's a convertible. It's nice to be able to just quickly push that button and lower everything at once to quickly get a breeze into the car or to raise them all at once if you are suddenly feeling a little bit too cold. Next, moving on to the center console, there is a pretty nice looking infotainment screen here. Maybe by today's standards, it's getting a little small, but to me, this is pretty much the perfect size and big enough and easy enough to see. And within this, it is powered by the BMW iDrive system. If you go to your home, you can cycle through different things such as your navigation, you can see your car's settings, your tire pressure, and basically all the important stuff you may want to see at a glance. And you can also cycle through a bunch of different installed apps on the car. And you can, of course, get to your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay as well through this screen. However, I will say one thing I find annoying about the iDrive system is that it has some controls in the screen that I feel like shouldn't really be controlled in the screen, such as the head-up display. To change the head-up display, you have to go through the settings in the screen to adjust the height or the brightness, etc. It's just a little bit finicky and sometimes hard to get to. But what I do really like about this BMW is that it still has hard touch controls for many different things, such as your climate. All the climate control buttons are here on the dashboard. Very easy to get to, very easy to use, which I like. There is a rotary control knob to control the infotainment screen as well as plenty of other hard touch buttons. Some of these buttons are pretty cool though. First of all, the coolest one is the engine start stop button. It is red and in the center of the center console. Very cool looking, very distinctive. And there is a button that you can use to quickly turn on the camera system. A very high definition camera pops up for the forward view, back view. And you can also go through different camera settings to see the car from the outside looking in, which is a very cool idea just to be able to get a better view of what your surroundings look like. And a really nice attention to detail is that the BMW on the screen is the same color as this actual BMW. And what's really cool about this camera system is that it has something called an activation point, and it's shown here on the screen. When you tap that, you can actually put different places on the map where you want the camera system to automatically turn on. Say if when you're pulling into your driveway, there's a curb there that you don't want to scrape the car on, you can set it to automatically turn on the camera system when you drive there, so then you will be able to see quickly what you're doing. And there's another button on the center console to make note of. This one is labeled M mode and this button automatically turns off all the driver assist features in case if you want to have a better chance of crashing your vehicle and driving crazily. And there's also a strange looking button here which kind of looks like it has the exhaust on it. Well this is used to adjust the noise level of the exhaust. If you want it louder or quieter you just use that button to adjust it. And there's also a pretty aggressive looking shifter knob in the car. This has a cool looking M logo on the top of it as well as the M stitching and it all looks in feels very nice. And overall, this shifter is pretty easy to use. It's electronic. When you move it to the left and up, you go into reverse. When you move it to the left, you can go into neutral. And the right is for drive. Or if you push it to the right for a second time, that'll turn on or off the manual shifting. And if you press this button, which is labeled P on the shifter, that will shift it into park. However, that's not the only button on this shift lever. This other one here has kind of strange looking lines on it. And this is used to adjust the aggressiveness of the shifts. If you push the button up, it'll make the shifting more aggressive. If you move it down, it makes the shifting less aggressive. And as far as storage goes, there isn't anything too crazy or special, but we do have a fairly good sized center console. There are door pockets with water bottle holders. There's a pretty big glove box 
and there's another storage compartment in the center console, which also has a wireless charger in it. Okay, I am now in the back seat of the M4, and to get back here, luckily it isn't too complicated of a thing to do, but also not necessarily the easiest. But all you have to do is lift on this tab on either of the front two seats, and then lean the seat forward, and it'll move forward and out of the way to give you as much room as possible. Then you can climb back here and sit yourself down, and then move the seat back into position. And then once you're ready to leave, all you have to do is lift up the strap once more, lean the seat forward, and it'll move out of the way for you. But once you are back here, and as long as this seat uh, didn't crush you as it was moving backwards, you're left with really not a whole lot of room. Um, not much leg room, not, not much knee room, and also not much comfort as far as your arms go. There aren't any armrests back here, which is a little bit of a surprise. There is a center pass-through here, and I thought that when you lower it, that might reveal an armrest, but unfortunately, there's just nothing there. And also back here, there are little slots in the side of the car for an air diffuser, which is a pretty handy thing to have. And being BMW also did take the time to put little pockets into the side of the car here. Honestly, they're very small and can't hold a whole lot, but you can at least put a cell phone or something small in there. But the good thing is there are cup holders here as well as climate controls, which is very surprising that BMW took the time to do that and put those there, but they did add it in so you can at least have a little bit of comfort as far as temperature goes. Now that we've taken a look at the exterior and the interior of the M4, let's go ahead and take it for a drive. Okay, we're driving the BMW M4 competition. And because this is a BMW, one of the ultimate driving machines, I had to wear my uh, racing gloves to be an ultimate driver. Uh, however, I will say these are Cadillac V-Series racing gloves, so I don't know if that's sacrilegious to wear uh, Cadillac gloves in a BMW, but hey, I just want to look the part. That's all that matters. <laughs> but anyways, we are driving off here, and uh, I decided to start off all in comfort settings to see how comfortable this BMW is. And although it is nice, this is still very much leaning towards sportiness versus comfort. Even when everything is in comfort mode, the suspension, the chassis, the steering, it still feels very precise. You still feel the bumps in the road, the imperfections, the harshness. That's simply what this car is. It's a serious car. You aren't buying it to be a comfortable sedan like a 7 Series or an S-Class or something. But otherwise, uh, the V6 engine, it is responsive. It is turbocharged, but um, it does really build up power quickly. Shifting manually, it's all very, very quick. Um, anything related really to how, how the car drives or how it feels, it's all right at your fingertips. You can easily adjust adjust it and you really feel like you're in control of this car, which is a very important thing. And the steering is really good too. Um, I will say, like I mentioned before, I feel like the steering wheel is maybe just a little bit too thick for my hands, but really that's more of a nitpick than anything else. The seats are fantastic. They really feel like they're holding you in place. I love how the bolsters are adjustable so I can make it a little bit firmer if I feel like I'm gonna go around some tight curves. The driver's position is really low, and I'm embarrassed to say this car has made me feel a lot like an old man getting in and out of this thing just because of how low these seats are. So I really have to just fall into them and then really pull myself out of them when I get out of the car. And it's almost embarrassing the noises I'm making, and I'm only 24 years old and I sound like an old man, but <laughs> I guess I'm just not used to driving cars as sporty as this. All right, and this car does come with launch control, so when we do our zero to 60 here in a second, I'm gonna see if I can figure out how to do that. So the M1 button here has been programmed to be all the sport settings and as sporty as possible, and I believe I have to have the shift settings into the most aggressive setting possible. Gotta remember how to do this. I've never actually done it before, so that's making me slightly nervous. All right, I think I've got it figured out. So I gotta put the foot on the brake, Foot right down, hand on the pedal. Preparing launch control. Launch control active. <laughs> 60. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh, that was insane. Wow. I mean, this thing has got to be the fastest car I have ever driven. That was so quick. 
definitely a lot quicker than the C7 Corvette we drove a few years ago. Definitely quicker than my car, the XLRV. And I think that BMW, they say that this car has about a three and a half second zero to 60, but in my mind, that felt quicker. That <laughs> really felt fast. <laughs> oh my goodness. And the shifts are just so quick. <laughs> this thing is so much fun. It's too much fun. I would get myself in trouble with this. And have, having my dad as a sheriff, that would not be a good thing. <laughs> and what's also really cool about this car is that you can turn this car into a two-wheel drive mode where it uh, sends power just to the rear wheels. This does have BMW's X-Drive, so it's usually an all-wheel drive, but if you wanted to just burn the rear tires, you uh, certainly can if you wanted to. <laughs> My goodness man it's just so precise too I mean my confidence level with this car is honestly uh, probably higher than it should be considering that I'm not exactly a track driver but that <laughs> it's just so good all right and now I think it's time that we uh, lower the top and luckily it's early March but we have fantastic weather today it's in the 60s all right here we go top down driving and I do think it's really neat that this is actually raise all the windows and I think it's really neat that even though this car is the competition version it's really made for the track and you can get it with a convertible and with no top no top that's so cool so you can go go to the racetrack go and absolutely destroy your lap time do a really good job and then just drive with the top down or even drive with the top down at the track I will say that uh, this car is a little bit too harsh to be like an everyday cruiser or everyday driver for me, but it's still fun to have a convertible though. I still love this. Oh no, I got some railroad tracks and these ones are bumpy. This is gonna be uncomfortable. Uh, <laughs> those bumps. <laughs> All right, I can't help myself. I need to try and get another fast acceleration here just to experience it. Preparing launch, active. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I know some of you probably just want to listen to the engine and just hear the car, but oh, it feels like I'm on a roller coaster with that thing. It's absolutely astonishing. This is probably the most fun car I've ever driven. The C7 Corvette Stingray, that was really fun, but this is on a whole other level. But what's really neat about BMW, and I think this car does help prove it, is that they've stayed true to what it means to have and drive a BMW, to be the ultimate driving machine. This car just has unbelievable performance. It's fast, it's sharp. I mean, it really is the ultimate driving machine and BMW has held to that for many decades and they continue to do what they're known for. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We uh, got another brand on the channel, a BMW. I really enjoyed it, it was fun. It's different from what I normally do, but um, I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. Uh, please remember to comment, like, and subscribe, and to come back again for more videos. Thank you for watching.